All right, welcome to the July 21st Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee call. Um, as you're all aware, two things that we must abide by. The first is the antitrust policy notice that is currently being displayed on the screen. And the second is our code of conduct, um, which is linked in the agenda. As far as announcements go, we have the standard announcements. The Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter goes out each Friday. Uh, if you have something that you want to include in that newsletter, please leave a comment on the uh, wiki page that's linked in the agenda and uh, it'll go out to hundreds of Hyperledger developers. Any other announcements that anybody has or would like to make? Okay, no announcements. Uh, so as far as quarterly reports, we don't have any due this week. Um, I did provide a, a link for you to check any open task for previous reports in case there were any that you haven't had a chance to review yet. Uh, the Hyperledger Transact report is due next Thursday. Uh, so we may or may not get that before the meeting next week, uh, but uh, we'll obviously cover that next week. I did not have any specific TSC business to discuss this week, uh, but please, if anybody else has something that we should be discussing, and now is the time to speak up. If uh, I just wanted to quickly mention that uh, I wrote a process that checks a bunch of our repos for things, and I found that there are uh, 50 something repos that don't have a maintainer's file. Uh, so I plan on reaching out to uh, those projects and asking them to add them, even if it's just a redirect, so. Okay, great, thanks, Ryan. Uh, Hart? Hey, Tracy, thanks. Um, so we had a uh, brief legal review over our charter language uh, yesterday. Um, while, while the essence of what we wanted to capture in the charter and the overall plan is fine, it looks like some more of our language is gonna have to be modified. Um, so unfortunately, this is still going to be an, an ongoing process, um, and we will keep everyone posted on this. Okay, thanks, Hart. And we did review that, um, just the overall essence of what it is that we wanted to change with the governing board on Monday, um, and there were no sort of concerns. Um, so I guess next stage, Hart, is to finish up the legal review and uh, any sort of wording, and then take that back to the governing board for their vote. Is that still the correct next steps? That's exactly right. We just need to get everything polished. Um, well, apparently our charter is now on the older side of charters in the Linux Foundation. Uh, and there have been some uh, desired updates. Uh, again, not changing anything about how things actually work or the essence of the charter, but just the terms themselves, so. All right, great. We'll look forward to seeing that uh, when it's ready. Any other TSC discussion items before we move on to the task force discussion? Okay, I'm not seeing anybody come off mute or any hands. So uh, Jim, I think it is over to you to talk about the Project Health Task Force. Yep, thanks, Tracy. Uh, let me share the screen. Okay. Um, so I uh, I did some um, um, follow up work from the uh, discussions we had uh, in the last call uh, that we talked about this. Uh, I I feel like we're at a pretty good place in terms of recognizing the different types of data that needs to be collected to, re to accurately re reflect uh, the health of a project and uh, where they will come from. Um, I think, I feel like the next step is uh, figuring out what do we do um, and what are the things we should look at first um, to get things, um, to get things going to get data uh, actually collected. Um, to that end, uh, I uh, categorized uh, the stuff that uh, we listed in this column, the supporting data column. 
um, in two in two different ways. Um, one is under this bullet list uh, in three categories. What are the things that are uh, quote unquote easily collected with API calls um, because they came from a developer friendly platform like GitHub or Discord? Uh, what are the things that don't really exist on behind any API? So we have to manually collect them. And the third category is they ex they don't necessarily exist anywhere, even in digital form. They pretty much exist in people's minds. So we have to think about ways to to pull those out uh, using you know surveys, for example. It is just one one measure uh, that I could think of. Uh, so we have to ask people uh, for, for this kind of information. So as you can see, it's uh, pretty straightforward. The GitHub and Discord information can be, can be pulled from API calls. Um, we'll talk about separately uh, who, who we contact or you know, who, who do we work with uh, to, to uh, make those API calls happen. Um, in the second category, um, we need people to go to these different places. They may be in a documentation uh, section of a project. They may be in uh, wiki pages or um, meet up uh, in various places and just collect them manually. Um, but there is also a, a third category where we should maybe work with uh, the marketing team um, to think about, can we uh, create, can we create surveys uh, or polls uh, to ask people about, about things? Um, I won't go through each of these bullets uh, individually, but are there any questions or comments or feedback on, on this part? I guess, especially um, in the third category, besides surveys, um, do we think there are other means to collect uh, this type of information? For example, how do we know if a community, a, a project is actively and effectively involving the community uh, to define their roadmap? Um, we may just have to ask the, the participants of that community that are, that are not committers to, to ask them, how do they feel? Right. How do they feel? Do they, do they feel um, they are being in, uh, included uh, in defining the roadmap? Um, I don't think there is uh, any objective data that exists anywhere that would tell uh, this story. Um, the second bullet about can new ideas be accommodated is similar to the first one. Uh, basically are outside voices being um, uh, respected uh, and um, that's it's pretty subjective that we may have to just actively ask people about. Um, <clears throat> so all of these are in this kind of uh, category. Um, creating polls and surveys is the only um way uh to create this or do we have other um other ways to do this maybe i don't know uh, i don't know if um uh, folks have ideas to contribute here so jim i i think you used an interesting word uh when you used the word subjective uh you know i i think that the challenge when it comes to measuring project health based on subjective type of um, criteria versus objective type of criteria is going to be very challenging um, right from the perspective of you may think people respond to you very quickly i may think that people don't respond to me very quickly 
uh, for a project, right? And what what is the difference between you and me in that case? Or uh, maybe it's the question that's the the problem, right? It, it's not the individual. Um, I, I just I think there's a, a whole lot of challenges that that come into play there. So I think we need to be careful about criteria that might be considered subjective for measuring project health. Um, although in some cases, the feeling that somebody gets when they try to enter a new community is so much more important than anything else, right? Do they feel like they're welcome um, when they join a, a community call? Are they immediately welcomed, even if there's somebody who's never been on that call before? Are they not welcome? That's going to have a big impact as far as whether or not somebody decides to stay uh, in that community, right? Or whether or not they decide to go. And, and so it, it's, I, I think this is the, the important part to being um, a welcoming community, right? Is, is how, how, how much people feel like they belong to that community and um, are welcomed in that community. So I don't know that that's a, it, that leads us anywhere, but I think it's something that we need to, to really consider uh, with this particular task force of measuring project health versus measuring the, um, the desire for people to stay once they've joined. Yeah, very much agree with with uh, the comment, uh, Tracy, that uh, this category um, touches on the, the more softy uh, side of things, uh, which is uh, still very important. Um, it, it can be expressed in multiple different ways, and it's very hard to measure uh, with data. Uh, how welcoming, you know, the tone of voice uh, the presenters are uh, during the community calls. Um, when people raise a question, how are they treated? Um, do they feel uh, welcome, respected? Um, so I, I, I chose the word uh, subjective because that's definitely um, from each individual's point of view a subject, uh, sub subjective feeding uh, more than anything else. And I, I do agree that it, it's a pretty important part in people's decision, should I continue to engage with this project or not? Um, because every time I said something, it's either neglected or shut down. You know, uh, why would I waste my time? Because uh, I'm not making any, uh, any impact um, versus my first question, you know, led to a great discussion that that ended up being a feature that lands in the next release. That's, you know, that's a great way to engage people. And it's hard to collect data along that, along that process to say, um, this is what the, the project team uh, is doing right. You have to, you have to ask. Um, so I think the, the third category is probably the most challenging part, but it could also be uh, very straightforward because we know how to create polls, we know how to design the right questions. Uh, we just need to decide if, if that's, um, that's something we want to do. Yeah. I see Any... everyone has his hand up. Go ahead. Right. Thank you, uh, Jim and Tracy. So I, I believe the topic that we are discussing kind of ties back to being responsive and in the community so that people feel welcome about it. Um, so very very similar um, topic that ties back probably ties to both of these roles, right? For instance, how friendly a particular project is and then and what other alternatives do we have in, apart from surveys. So um, this also came up in our security uh, process task force. And, and Tracy, I saw your replies as well. I'll try to address them. Um, was that some of these issues that are reported through these uh, tools that are again linked uh, to Hyperledger Foundation, right? For, um, um, where, for instance, the security issues are reported, we need a mechanism to address them in, in time. If that's not done, then 
uh, when I say address, it should at least be a reply saying that, hey, your uh, effort is considered and we are in process of evaluating, right? So even such a response would matter to us. So these external tools that we currently have, um, I guess that's the security uh, uh, reporting tool that we can consider for now, but there could be other tools which I'm not aware of could also play a role. Yeah, agree with that. So uh, besides the discussions that happen on um, hyperledger properties, you know, the community calls and whatnot, um, those external tools should also be considered. Yeah, thanks for that input, Arun. Cool. Um, if there's no uh, other feedback for now, uh, maybe we can continue. Uh, the second thing I did was uh, for each of the items, I listed them uh, uh, with different color, uh, trying to decide uh, what are the things we can start doing uh, in the first phase to collect them. Um, so green means easy, uh, blue means a little harder, and red means very hard. Uh, so if we can agree on um the list of green items uh, then we can think about um, doing them so i guess i don't know what's the best way to run through that uh, maybe just give folks a few minutes to look at this list and see if the coloring makes sense and we should and then uh, i'd like the uh, start talking about how do we how do we go about collecting them? Who do we talk to? So, folks, please maybe take um, one minute or two, uh, just. Take a look and see if any jumps out at you that's miscolored, uh, and we can talk about those, and then we'll move on to um, uh, to the how part. So, Jim, under diversity, the first bullet, uh, the number of organizations contributing to the code base and roadmap. Um, Rai, you sent out a link uh, recently to a tool that collects some data. Um, I forget what the tool is called, but I had a look at that and they did have organizational data um, associated with that. And I'm wondering if they can get that information, if we could also get that information in some way, shape or form, and maybe that's a green instead of a blue. Um, are you talking about the GHE thing? No, no, no. Um, the external tool. Let's see if I can find it. Um, you put oh, it on Discord. Uh, the open something.io. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll 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 get a link and uh, drop it in the uh, TSC chat. Okay. Is that a uh, tool that uh, tells it's us the? organization behind each of the GitHub handles? It's ossinsight.io um, is what it is. I found it right. Um, when you said open, I was able to search. Um, and you can specify a repository and it gives you a, a lot of data on, um, on the particular repository. So. Trying to grab a uh, link. To yeah, I also uh, did a thing about. Uh, I added a thing for Hyperledger as well. Okay, I put a link in the uh, in the Discord channel for today's meeting. So if people would like to take a look at it. I think there's some really interesting information in that 
um, that you had found there, right? And so could be could be something that we use as we go forward. Oh, cool. That's that's great. Um, thanks for that input, Tracy. Um, let's give folks another minute to run down the list. I also, uh, I, I, I created, I, I posted a link to the Hyperledger collection and I also created collections for Bezu and uh, Fabric and I will post a link to the Fabric one as well. OSS inside, got it. Okay, so um, let's talk about how to go about collecting them. Uh, the first obvious um, place is GitHub uh, APIs. Um, a lot of us are developers, we know those APIs and we know you can make a lot of uh, um, composite API calls and process data, write some simple programs. Um, and same for Discord um, APIs. I guess the main question is uh, who would be doing this kind of thing? Um, uh, I know I can do it, but I know a lot of people on the call can do it, but we don't really have the time or the, the resources necessary to make this a mission for ourselves personally. I, I don't know if Hyperledger has the resource for doing this kind of thing. I, I'm, I'm completely um, asking for your opinions. Uh, it's something that we can automate then uh, preferably by a GitHub action, then the answer is yes. Um, if it's something that we can add to uh, LFX, the answer is maybe. Uh, what's the second one? Um, uh, insights, uh, LFX okay. insights. Gotcha. It's undergoing a lot of change right now. Uh, I can't even add like new projects um, to it. Once they get the new version public, then uh, I'll see what we can get. And Hart has his hand up. Yeah, uh, please, Hart. Yeah, I just wanted to second right here that in the long run, I think a lot of this stuff is a great, uh, you know, it, it, it's a great suggestion for what LFX should include. Um, so, you know, if some people from the community want to go talk to the LFX folks uh, at some point, I think that would be a fantastic thing. Uh, I think they would be interested in hearing from you all. Uh, and, you know, it might be a way to push things that, that, you know, we want into, you know, places that would actually benefit everyone in the Linux Foundation. Um, as Rai correctly pointed out, uh, these folks are extremely busy and behind right now. Um, so this is, again, a longer run thing than a, a shorter run, but, you know, it's something we should definitely consider. Sounds good. Um, so uh, if we want to talk to the L 
FX team, I guess it'll be just me and Rai getting a call with them. Is it as simple as it as that? Uh, yeah. Um, we can we can set that up. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so I heard um, GitHub Actions. Um, this would be uh, asking each uh, project team to set this up uh, in their repositories, or this is something that um, the uh, Hyperledger team can set up in at the org level. Uh, I would prefer to set it up in probably the uh, it, no, not for every project. That's just terrible. Um, I, I mean, it, it would be code for no reason. Um, I, I'll find a repo or make a repo where it can park. Uh, cool. Great. Um, and did I hear Rai, you volunteered to, to look into this? Uh, I, I think we can definitely help, you know, with in terms of uh, finding the API, finding the right endpoints and that sort of thing. But would you be responsible for um, looking after this, this ripple and the content in it? Or uh, or team? I, I, I can. Um, I, my preference would be uh, that I don't develop it, um, but mm -hmm. uh, let me take a stab at it. I'm already collecting a bunch of this data in other ways. Yeah, I, so, I saw those. Uh, so let's just uh, give me, I, let's just say no firm answer at this point. I, I mean, no problem. I'm, yeah, we, we probably can ask for help from the community as well. There's a lot of, um, there should be there should be uh, people who are willing to help in this way. Um, okay, cool. Um, we should get the uh, repository set up and then uh, at least make one or two uh, endpoint calls to to show how things should be implemented, and then we can we can grow from there. I think between you and me, we can at least get something. Uh, going to show uh, as an example how things should be done and then over time that can be built up does it sound okay to you right yep all right sounds good um so that covers the uh, github apis and discord apis um and that is majority of the green items. Uh, let me think. Um, there are also these other things that are marked uh, as green, but not API driven. Um, meetups, for example. Um, don't know if the meetup platform has any APIs that we can use to say how many um, uh, meetups were organized by the Hyperledger ones. Uh, do we, how do we even identify the Hyperledger ones? I don't think there, there's a single organization that owns all of the meetup groups. There, there is, we, we, we have a paid meetup account. Um, yeah, yeah, there is. And with okay. their meetup has pretty nice APIs as far as I, I know. I've looked into it, but we haven't really used them, but I've looked into it and they do have pretty extensive. Okay, that's great news. I haven't looked at them at all, so that's great news. So all the um, uh, Hyperledger meetup groups in different locations, they all belong to uh, the, the high-level Hyperledger org? Yeah, I mean, there may be one or two that are outside the org that just people set up, but that's pretty minor. Yeah, all the ones that we run are on one org. Okay, uh, that's great news.
Okay, so we can look into those as well. Um, let's see, uh, are there other sources in the green? Um, so Docker, Docker polls, that's pretty straightforward in uh, docker.com. Uh, binary downloads. Um, don't know if GitHub provides this, but it would be a GitHub API if it's uh, if there is one. Um, same for all of this. Um, GitHub, GitHub. Okay, so I think that covers all the green items. So if we move on to the blue ones. Um, I think the blue ones are mainly manual, uh, manual collection. Um, I guess my first question is, how do we feel about um, asking each project team to self-report, or do we want to have a uh, um, a team that the TSC designates that would be doing this for every project? because it's a manual collection. Somebody has to do some uh, busy work uh, to collect that data. Do we want to decentralize that uh, for all the projects to do that for them, uh, themselves? Uh, assuming everybody will do it uh, diligently and uh, honestly, or do we want a, um, um, a specific team to be responsible for all projects? So, so one thing that I'll say is Part of the reason for creating this task force, if I remember correctly, was the fact that we thought we could automate a lot of the project reports. And if we start asking a bunch of questions um, of the project maintainers to answer in doing their project reports, are we um, doing, are we taking a step back, right, from where we're mm -hmm. at today with the project reports? Yeah. Um, and so I, you know, just let's keep in mind that the original intention of this is to to make things easier for us, one, to determine what this health of the project is, but two, to make it easier for the people who are creating the reports um, to not have to provide data that is, uh, you know, over and beyond something, right, to, to make the project reporting easier. Yes, um, thanks for that reminder, Tracy. So um, I think uh, it was just, just naturally um, uh, coming out of the discussion that uh, these uh, data sources uh, were um, listed here that are at, at least at, uh, at the moment not automatable. Um, so I guess, this changes the question to, uh, do we want to just put these aside for now until they become automatable? We, we can totally make that decision instead. So I, uh, based on what Tracy just reminded us, I'd like to propose that uh, we not look at uh, collecting those that are not automatable. Are there any uh, objections to that? Peter? Not an objection. Yeah, Peter, I please. To say that I support that because I think the low hanging fruit would be all the automatable ones, and then we can always iterate on the manual ones later. Great, thanks, Peter. All right, so that solves a big problem uh, uh, for us. So, um, we would focus on, uh, I think, these three uh, major data sources uh, that are API-driven. 
Uh, I think 80% uh, or more are between GitHub and Discord. There's some behind uh, Meetup. Uh, and Rai and I will uh, look, start looking to maybe at, at least one call uh, or two calls to each of the platforms and create a new um, repository uh, to show how those should be made. Is a bash script or um, Node.js or Python programs, right? So people can uh, contribute to that over time and grow this uh, this footprint. Um, honestly, the um, uh, the red colored ones are also falling into the same category of not being automatable uh, for now. So I think we should just uh, also leave those behind, but should we consider um, still creating a space for those to be reported if people would like to contribute to, to that? For example, I would imagine some, uh, research um, uh, folks would like to, to say our uh, effort has resulted in the publication of these, you know, 10 different um, papers um, right on the Cornell side, for example, where would they, so that they would have a place to, um, to report that? What would be the right uh, place for that kind of reporting to be done? I think it should be a, a long running uh, thing. So maybe create a page um, on the TSC site dedicated to that. Would that make sense? Peter? I think we could allow people to self-report these custom metrics that they have, but the real question is, then how do we take that into account? If, you know, if it's there, then, must we then spend time sort of processing it manually as well? Because I wouldn't mind people just collecting the data so that maybe in the future it can be used, but I wouldn't necessarily want to be then uh, uh, obligated to then do myself with it myself, do something with it myself that would then end up being yet another manual process. So I don't want, I wouldn't want that to leak into or grow itself out into more manual things. Basically, I'm just a huge proponent of automation. Um, so I think what you're saying is uh, definitely allow people to uh, report, um, but don't necessarily have to uh, take those into account uh, when evaluating a project's health because uh, that'll require making those uh, reports um, accurate and, and comprehensive, which would generate more manual work. Yes, I think that's a good TLDR. If okay. they want to call the information out for whatever else reason, it's always there in the acknowledged existence. I just don't want it to be additional manual chores. Bobby? Hi, everybody. Um, I keep some of these metrics on a frameworks and tool page for each project. I'll put a link in the chat to the BASU one. If that helps, I continue to do this. So it would be there for people to look at and get metrics from. Um, I'll put a link in the chat right now. Hold on just a second. Oh, do I have to use Discord chat? Um, yeah, I guess if you okay, no worries. I'll put it in the TSP Discord chat. Yeah, if you are if you are there, yeah, the right place. Great, thanks, Bobby. Okay, um, let's see. So I think um, for me at least, it's a pretty good place to end the call. Um, 
I feel like we have uh, some concrete actions to act on, and we agreed on the, the types of data we'd like to collect with the automation. Um, and Ryan and I will um, take the action and report uh, to folks uh, on the next call. Um, are there any other uh, last minute comments or, or, or questions? If not, uh, I give the call back to you, uh, Tracy. All right, thanks, Jim. Uh, so as far as I know, um, I haven't seen any sort of items come up yet for next week's call, um, but if they do, that's fine. We can get them in the agenda. But what I was thinking is that maybe we need it to uh, use the task force dis discussion next week for continuing some of the security discussions since I, I know there's been some movement on that uh, since the last go around. And then we'll go back and start over again with Dano um, on the project gaps and, and just continue that way with the task force. So that's my plan. If anybody has any other ideas, I'm open to hearing them. Bobby? I was just wondering if the uh, documentation task force can get on the calendar the first um, meeting. I think it's the second of August. Let me just double check that. For the uh, it's the fourth of August to report what we've concluded. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Um, Thank you. So so we'll do security next week. Uh, the documentation one the following week, and then start over again. Uh, if that sounds good to everybody. All right, uh, so with that, we'll close the meeting and we will talk again next week. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, guys.